So finally we have the full release version of MultiWii version 2.2. It's taken a while but it's here. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of changes in version 2.2. Uh, so I'm just going to go through um, the setup on it and some of the parameters. Um, one thing that's interesting to note is that um, a lot of the changes we need to make on some of the other tabs we don't need to do anymore. So everything really is confined to the config.h um, page. So um, I'm just going to go through and what I'm going to do is just show you what I need to do to set up a tricopter with the code. So firstly, a lot of the stuff here hasn't changed, but as I come across new features, I'll highlight them. So the first thing I'm going to do is uncomment define try. Uh, note there is also now, for those of you interested, a 6H model. But if you do have a Scarab Vampire, you need to get a specific file still from MultiWii Copter. Okay, min throttle hasn't changed, most of this hasn't changed. I do change. I do myself change to 400,000 L, the I2C speed. The default is 100,000. Um, for your serious board, Paris boards, you want to define the internal I2C pickup pull-ups. Sorry. Okay, moving further down, we've got our IMU board types, and we've got a few new ones. We have previously we would use Cirrus, but now we've got Cirrus GPS. The nice thing about that is that because this is a separate configuration now available from this tab, we don't have to go into def H and change around all the stuff for allowing for the inverted mag sensor. It's all done just by setting that. Another interesting thing to note is these two new devices. Stay tuned, I've heard some nice things from MultiWii Copter about some new controllers on the way. Don't go bugging Quinton, they'll be out when they're out, but uh, they're going to be interesting. So there's the Cirrus Air and the Cirrus Air GPS. Obviously the GPS will have the inverted mag sensor required in the settings. So anyway, so I don't have to now go if I've got a GPS anymore into Def H. I can just define that I've got a GPS version of Cirrus here. Okay, scrolling down, we come to Tricopter, and for the Scarab Tricopter, we need to have a negative direction. Uh, we want to change the min to 1100. That's the actual tail servo throw, and the max to 1900. These are pretty much default numbers on the, the Scarab. All right, we can ignore the that now there's a few new things with cab with the cam stab all right i'm just going to change a number here because i know my number is different so i've got a different setup on the roll gimbal on my tricopter but Okay, all right, now, the two new features are this. Tilt pitch aux channel three and roll pitch aux channel four. If you've got all four aux channels going into your Paris board, you actually have the ability to use sliders or pots on your radio to override the gimbal. So if you want to give an offset on pitch or on roll, you can actually dial that in from the radio and do it live. Uh, I don't want to use that feature, so I am going to comment out those two lines to disable it, but it is a really cool new feature. The facility to override was in the code for a while. This gives you the, the, the facility to not use it, to actually comment it out if you don't need it. Okay, scrolling on down, we come to RC system. I'm using a summed input on my tricopter, so I need to uncomment that. So that gives me a single channel input via a, uh, of my Futaba radio. So I can just use a single line input 
and that allows it to happen. Uh, also to note, there is also support now for Spectrum satellites. I have no idea how to actually make this work. I have no idea how to connect it, but there is support not only to actually use a spectrum, a single spectrum satellite into the board directly. I don't know which boards have the facilities, and uh, but also there's a bind facility available as well from the GUI now for spectrum satellite support. But I haven't played with it. I don't know how to use it, um, and it. As far as I know, it's only a single satellite input. So if you're really looking at some range on your multicopter, maybe you still want to keep, you might want to keep to a discrete um, receiver. Okay. Um, this line here, if you've got more than six motors, it means that you're using um, motors five and six for the motors instead of for the gimbal. Um, just neatens up how you plug stuff into the board. Uh, don't forget the old Define Ox 2 on pin 8 if you are running a standard receiver. I'm not. I'm running the, the summed input so I don't need to uncomment that anymore. Okay. Um, there is now a facility within it to actually change the pin within the code now to change what pin inputs are are doing what and what pin outputs are doing what. Um, don't mess with that unless you're uh, really going to uh, be using it and know what you're doing. Um, okay, uh, all four potential serial ports are now allowed for within the code. I haven't actually seen a board that lets you wire to all four, but it's there available. Um, don't forget, if you're starting from scratch in this code, on a Sirius, you want to define ITG 3200 low pass filter at 42 hertz. Don't need gyro smoothing, we don't want moving average gyros. Okay, now, there are some a couple of other new features. This one is very interesting. Gyro calibration will be repeated if the copter is moved during calibration. You can actually allow this. And if you accidentally bump the airframe while you're cal cal calibrating the gyro or at startup, it will actually wait and set the gyro up after motion is stopped. Okay. Uh, we've got this thing here, which is pretty cool. Another new feature: define AP for mode 40. Basically, what this is is it's sort of dead, uh, producing a dead band, and the default is 40. What this means is that when you're in position hold, if you just bump the sticks, nothing will happen. But if you go beyond a certain point of the sticks and move the airframe in the air beyond 40, um, the new hold position will be reset. So basically, if you're in position hold and you're in a hover and you don't like where you are, by moving the sticks, you can move it and it will actually reset the um, hold position. If you don't want that feature to work, the recommendation is you set that up to a really high number, like 200, 500, something like that. Okay, I'm not gonna go into acro trainer mode because I haven't got my head around it quite yet. Fail safe is still there, but I still prefer to do it in the radio. There is um, the failsafe feature has been greatly changed since the previous version. Um, you might want to read the documentation on what has changed with failsafe. Okay, I'm going to skip the LED ring and the flasher, landing lights, none of this I use, so I can't really tell you what to do with it. Um, TX related, we've still got to find dead band, but we've also got this, which is out hold throttle neutral zone and again it's defaulted to 40. Um, if you want to change that default from 40 you enable this and change the number and basically what that means is that while you're in altitude hold again you've got a little bit of dead band if you go beyond 40 plus or minus 40 on your throttle stick the height will change and it will save the new um, hold height if you like so you can actually lift or lower 
um, the airframe while you're flying in in altitude hold mode and actually reset by going beyond a certain point in on the stick where you're going to maintain your altitude which is a really cool feature when you think about it okay uh, GPS I'm going to define I2C GPS um, I'm going to comment, uncomment, or comment in, comment out, uh, GPS LED indicator because it just annoys me. Um, there is now a use MSP waypoint. So there is actually waypoint facilities within the code, um, but you need to use WinGUI, which is an Android app, to do it. Um, and at the moment, that only communicates via Bluetooth. So um, I've played with it a little bit, but um, I keep running out of Bluetooth range, so I'm not playing with it anymore for the moment. Not that it's caused any dramas, it's just, you know, mm, call me cautious. Um, pretty much most of the rest of the GPS code is the same. You do need to set your mag declination, which I covered in a previous um, video on how to find that. There is a lead lag filter now being introduced. Basically it preempts what the GPS figures will be as you're flying based on your current motion um, which evidently is really at making the, the GPS much nicer to fly around. Uh, the rest of the GPS stuff is as per the previous version. Okay. Uh, OLEDs display. I'm not going to activate on this particular aircraft, but um, if you want to run the Cirrus OLED, it's this one here. You also need to, it's also recommended that you suppress the logo just to save memory. And if you are going to use it, you also need to allow for telemetry and um, as a default Quinton uses the LCD steps 034 now for the sake of saving memory what you want to do is suppress the unused pages if you don't do this the pages that you're not using as defined by this number here um, get generated by the code um, which is a bad thing uh, it just takes up memory you don't need right um, moving on all the VBAT and everything's still the same a new feature is out hold fast throttle out hold fast throttle change just leave it defined that m makes it it means that the throttle varies faster during altitude hold, um, it just gives you a more, much more stable hover. Um, again, I like to add define motor stop. Mid RC is 1500. Servo speed, I still leave at 50. Try, I tried playing with 300 on a digital servo and really it didn't improve anything. Um, we don't need ASC calibration and that's pretty much it. Hit verify and we get a solid compile. There we go.